So I'm not in the best mood this morning since my laptop decided to stop working last night. So I think spending money on antiques is going to be less fun knowing I have to spend a lot of money repairing my computer. But it is what it is, and at least my dress is cute today. So I'm wearing this dress that I picked up from the Vintage Fair I went to, or the Vintage Expo I went to in New York City. I actually favorited this dress on Etsy, and then I ended up purchasing it at the Expo. So I think we are meant to be together. It's a little wrinkled today, though, from packing, but that's okay. And then I just have on a leather belt from the 80s that matches it. I'm wearing a really cute little straw half hat. And then, of course, the Claire's from Royal Vintage with some roughly looking socks. So we are now approaching Burkholders. Not that you would really expect that based off of the scenery. Uh, it really is in the middle of nowhere as many of the places we're going to are. But it's a very nice store. It's one of the most expensive quilting stores so we don't tend to get very much here. But as my mom's pointed out they carry whole collections so you find fabrics here that you don't really see at any of the other stores. So if I see something here I'm probably willing to buy it um, even if it is a little bit more expensive just because I love it. But if I don't see anything I love, then that means I could get something potentially at Weaver's, Dry Goods, which is another store we're going to today, or Zooks, which we're going to tomorrow, uh, who have fabric priced a little bit cheaper. And here we are, ready to do some fabric shopping. beautiful wall of batiks. I love batiks so much. I don't think I've ever actually worked with them, at least not recently. But they're so pretty. Especially this one. Actually, I have a frog belt buckle that would look really cool with a green batik. Hmm. I might have to get out the picture of that. Wouldn't those be darling together? I think they would be. I think that would be super cute. There are more batiks. It's like batik overload slash heaven. Mostly heaven. We're now in the prints area, so they have a whole wall of food prints, and they have like a shelf devoted to casino prints and map prints, which are my favorite. I actually really love geographical prints. I think they're super pretty. I ended up purchasing polka dots for Studio Tour Barbie. And I'm just seeing if they have better polka dots here, but they're all white on colors where I need black on colors, so I think I made a good call. I really like these prints. I think I've commented on them before. I just think they're really pretty. These are really, really nice together. I'm looking through the discount fabrics now. These boutiques are all $4.99 a yard. I think these three are really, really cool together. No clue what I'd do with them, but really, really cool. Unfortunately, I don't think I like any of the others as much as I like that one I saw up front. And these are just regular sale fabrics, which I also need to go through. Because if you can find good fabric on sale, why buy full price fabric? So, I ended up getting the black and green batik fabric for the frog inspired dress. The frog buckle inspired dress. Or not inspired dress, just like a dress to go with the frog buckle. I thought this would be a really good match for it and I ended up getting three and a half yards of it. And then I got 12, yes, 12 yards of the one on the bottom. This was on sale for $3.99 which is really cheap for a very high quality quilt fabric and I like the color of it a lot. I'm really attracted to green tones and I thought this print would be appropriate for something 1840s through 1850s ish. I really want to play around with making dresses that have ruffles on the hem and just a little bit more to them than a lot of the day dresses I've made in the past. So purchasing 12 yards instead of the 8 that I normally do gives me a lot of extra fabric to play around with. So that's kind of what I have in mind with this one. I'm thinking diagonal or um, zigzag kind of ruffles across the hem and maybe a few tiers of them would be neat. So that is what I picked up from Burke Holders and now I'm just waiting for my mom to pay and then I think we're heading off to Adamstown. 
so off in the distance that blue building is Fabric Mart. We actually decided to come back here because today Silk is 65% off, which is my dream sale for the store to be having while we're in the area. Uh, most of what I purchased from them are Silk, so I'm really excited. Uh, we're gonna go in and see what we can find. So I just got out of Fabric Mart and I'm really glad that we ended up going back. I purchased three Silk Chiffons, which are probably gonna end up being like fantasy inspired Victorian blouses or 1920s projects. Not completely sure which yet, but there's this really pretty one with metallic threads. Then there's a very sheer chiffon with metallic threads, but a black base. And then there's this one, which wasn't even on the website yet because it was so new and it's a green and white stripe and I just love it. And then this one is a beautiful satin. It was marked $92 a yard, but they were selling it for 24 bucks a yard and then it was 65% off. So it ended up being like $8.75 a yard. So I got nine yards for an 18th century project. And then my favorite fabric is this Chantilly lace, which has sequins and beads on it. I got six yards and it was $30 for the full cut, which is like the price of one yard of lace trim in the garment district. So that was definitely a deal and I'm really happy with all of my purchases. And now we are going to move on to some of the other stops we had planned for the day. Stoutberg Village, which is a cute little series of shops, and this is where Plum Pudding Antiquities, or Plum Pudding Inc., I can't remember which, is, and it's a beautiful little hat sh shop. Now, I'm probably not going to be able to film very much in here because it's very small, but I'm going to try and take some photos on my phone if they'll let me and insert those into the video because it's just a beautiful store full of really great quality and condition vintage hats. Morning, ladies. Hello. Hello. How are you? Good. All right. How are you? Good. My wife will tell you all the new and everything that you put in. Oh, I'm sure she will. Is it out for a stroll or do you collect? I collect. What do you collect? Hats. Well, I'm going to get to it because I don't know anything about hats. So I definitely didn't get very much footage in there. I'm also going to insert some footage of the hats that I bought because I bought six hats and they're all glorious. They have such amazing hats in there. It was really fun looking around and talking to the woman who owns it. And I would definitely recommend that place if you like hats or just like browsing hats. So we are at the Antique Heritage Center or Heritage Antique Center. This wasn't on our list, but we went here last time and it was really nice. So we're going back. old Florence ceramic flower holder from what they call the garage era because it was done in Florence Ward's garage before they moved to the factory so the bottoms aren't even molded with the hole fascinating history for you there so in there I purchased three patterns they're from the 1930s this one's from 1936 1936 and then I don't know when this is from but they're all 1930s patterns they're really beautiful patterns they've never been used before and they're all in a size 18 uh, and I'm usually the size 16 in patterns but for something that fits slimmer over the hips I'm quite happy to buy a size up so I really really love all of these designs and they were ten dollars each and then this one's 14 bucks which is a steal because patterns from the 1930s usually go for like 30 or even even $40 online. They're much harder to find than the ones from the 40s and 50s. So I am one happy camper and now we are headed off to the next stop. It's really windy so I don't know how well you can hear me but we're now at Adam's Antique Annex. This wasn't next on the list but it was the one that was closest so that's where we're going. In the hat store we were just at has a little stall here so I might end up getting a few more things from her even though she's not here. Lady head vases. This store has a great selection of jewelry so I'm on the lookout for rings because I haven't bought any rings so far this trip. <laughs> and just browsing in general because they're pretty to look at. Apparently there's a lot of lazy head phases too. So these hats are all from the Plum Pudding Antiques place that we just went to. She has a few stalls and cases here. And I really like those two. And I'm also looking at this pink one down here that's made out of wool. It's just gorgeous. All of the hats in the other case were too small for me, but now I set my sights on this green one. It's everything. It's so pretty. I also found a ring I liked, but it was $1,000, so I'm not getting that. I'm saving up for my computer repairs. 
It's, it's gorgeous. It's so, so pretty. I don't think there's anything I actually want from it, but it's gorgeous. My mom collects miniature docks and figurines, and she's going to have a field day with this booth. How perfect would that be for my sewing room? If only it wasn't $450. That's really cool though. Yeah. I want a light up sign that says McCall's Patterns. Is that too much to ask for? It's under like 40 bucks. Yeah. These ones are Royal Dalton. Mm hmm. I didn't know they made those. Lots of figurines, but are there any floor ceramics? No. No, there are not. I am super duper into this hat. I think it's so pretty. Look at that. It's beautiful. This looks like the hat I made for my Victorian costume last year with the fake crow glued to it. These booths are amazing, though. That's different. Bus Piggy Bank. Oh. How to Train Your Dragon is my favorite movie of all time. And I love the second and third ones, too. So, we just got out of Adam's Antique Annex. I purchased three more hats, one from the Plum Pudding Lady, because unfortunately most of the ones in her cases that I liked were too small for me, but I got one really delightful lilac one. And then I purchased a green hat and a red hat from a woman named Susie, who has several booths there. And she has a lot of clothing from the Victorian era too, and just some really fantastic pieces. But these hats were what really stuck out to me, and what stuck in my price range. So I was gonna do a little try on hat modeling session for you guys, but unfortunately, or fortunately, I guess, she wraps them really nicely in newspaper. So I don't want to take them out and do that, but I will insert some footage of what they look like here. And this got me thinking, would you guys be interested in a hat collection video of all my vintage hats? Because I think that would be a blast to film. And I love hats, and I love talking about hats, so that's definitely something that I could do. And now we're off to German Trading Post. This is another place that we've been to within the past couple of months. We went there in April, and it's currently August. But we're in the area, so I think it's worth going back to. And that's the case for all the stores that we're going today, really. We have officially arrived at the German Trading Post and Antiques Showcase, so that is where we're going into now. Look at the elephant buckle, it's amazing. It's $18, I think. That might be worth it. Sparkly. I got all excited, but they're just knockoff Florence figurines. None of them are actual Florence ceramics. It's very disappointing. That's the creepy find of the day right there. So I ended up buying a skirt from there and the elephant buckle and now we're going into plaid soapbox where I'm going into. My mom has abandoned me, which is a vintage clothing store that sells a mixture of like true vintage and like 80s stuff. That is a super cute bag. Both of these are. Lots of cute plaid skirts. This is our next stop, Lancaster County Antique Market, and there are 60 plus dealers. It's a nice little store. That one. Vintage Barbies. Lots of them. I've never seen see-through hat boxes before, but they make an awful lot of sense. So I tried to buy stuff in there. I tried on multiple hats, but none of them fit me quite right or were in condition that I really wanted to pay the price they were listed for for them. 
good English. And there wasn't anything else that really sparked my interest in there. I remember us being really impressed by it the first time we went there, but every other time it's been kind of lackluster. They did have a lot of Barbies though, and they do have a nice range of stuff. They've got toys, they've got hats, they've got clothing, they've got medical supplies, buttons, like a good range of stuff, just not a lot of stuff that we're interested in. So we were in and out of there pretty quick, and now we're on to the next stop, which is Mad Hatter, which is probably my favorite antique mall in the area, so I'm looking forward to that a lot. Oh, look at how cute the little baby sewing machine is. It's my hand for scale. It's super tiny and cute. I found the mother load of vintage sweaters. There are seriously so many here. I found a couple I really loved that were too expensive, but I think I'm going to get this one. It's a really nice knit, and it's only 25 bucks. It's got cute little seaming details on it, too, and I don't have a long sleeve pink sweater. You won't believe what they have here. What? They have the exact same pair of figurines that I purchased here two years ago. What are the odds of that, though? Yeah. And it was this exact booth, too. These toasters are like $110. It seems like an awful lot to me, but it does say they're working condition. So we just got out of Bad Hatter. We didn't take very long in there since we've been there so recently. And now we are going to try and find ice cream. And then we're going to go to Pine Hills Antique Mall. This is what we're having for lunch. It's not the healthiest, but it does look absolutely delicious. It is a chocolate peanut butter sundae with peanut butter cups on top. Yeah, it's like brooch heaven. Yeah. I really don't wear any, but... I like the little tiny shoe. Yeah. Another Florent Ceramics from the garage era, which aren't the type that I collect, annoyingly. Hats and dead animals, my type of booth. This would be great if I'd started my bunny collection. Right? People who haven't updated their booths since Easter. Those are some pretty buttons. But it's a button display card, so they're all different sizes. These are all embroidered pillowcases, which are the type that I have on my bed. But a lot of these aren't large enough for the pillows that I actually use, so I don't think I'll be getting any. I'm buying this pattern. In fact, I've already purchased this pattern. It's an advanced pattern, which I don't usually like, but I really like the design of it. I think it's really cute. Isn't that cute? Also, they have a whole bunch of vintage Barbies here. I don't think I'm getting any of them. And they have some vintage Barbie clothing too, and some stuff that's still in packaging. It's really cool. So we've just randomly stopped at this place called 272 Antiques and Collectibles. I think 272 is the address. It's called Antiques and Collectibles. And we just drove past it and thought we would give it a try. We have 45 minutes to spend in there. Wow. Kind of amazing. I was so obsessed with Beanie Babies when I was younger. It's like seeing little bits of my childhood. I owned the ferret. I owned this cat. I owned this cat. Mine are like so fuzzy and worn with age though. I own these two cats. I used to carry them around with my leashes on their necks. I owned this guy too. Aww. And this one. Okay. This Siamese cat there was my ultimate favorite. It got like prime spot on the bed. So we've officially made it to Weaver's. I didn't film much in the last place. It was just okay. I probably wouldn't make the extra stop next time but my mom found a couple of things she liked. And now we are at Weaver's Dry Goods which is my favorite quilting fabric store. I think it's fantastic. I love how stuff is laid out. Their prices are okay uh, but they just have a really nice variety of stuff. The lighting's really nice. It's just a very pleasing store to shop in. Uh, so I'm excited to go in here. I don't know how much footage I'm going to film. I am exhausted. I was like fighting falling asleep in the car on the way here and it was only a 20 minute drive. So that doesn't bode particularly well for the fact that I have a Genius Bar appointment in two hours. 
but I'm gonna do what I can and hopefully we can explore this door together. Last time they have lots of gingham here. I found a gingham that I think will work perfectly for Swirl Ponytail Barbie. And now I'm just looking through their prints. They have a lot of cute prints here. This is where all of their four and five nine nine a yard fabric is, which is right up my alley. And still really good quality. It's um, a lot like what Goodfield says, sells, or Zinc's fabric outlet as it's now called. I think this fabric is absolutely adorable with the little mushrooms on it. So I might get some of that. They have it in pink too, but I feel like I have more pink than blue in my wardrobe, so it might be nice to mix it up a little bit with this one. I also found these two fabrics, which I think are just darling together, so I might get this for a 1930s project. No one's here, so I can show you how much I love the K-Facet prints. They're amazing. These are all panels along this wall. And there's just fabric as far as you can see. I'm really digging these two, so I might get some of those. Look, they're a deer! After me attempting to zoom in on the deer and failing, I just realized how the zoom works on my camera, so that's nice. But this is what I ended up getting from Weavers. So I picked up five yards of this gingham, which I'm going to use for a variant of Swirl Ponytail Barbie. I can't remember what the exact outfit's called, but it's a pink gingham dress. And then for one of the patterns I purchased earlier today, this Aunt Adams pattern from the 1930s, I picked up this 30s pink print, and then this contrasting fabric, or this matching fabric that I'm going to use for belt. Then I picked up these two K facet prints, which I thought were really cool and maybe I could use for this pattern. So the jumper made out of one and the blouse made out of the other. It might be chaotic and ridiculous and kind of ugly, but I'm into the idea, so I'm going to risk it. And then lastly, I purchased this mushroom stripe print. I just really like stripe prints. I want to play around with a dress that has diagonal stripes at the front and maybe like 1940 style sleeves. And I actually just purchased a hat in this olive tone, so maybe I can make something to match that. So that is my little haul. And now we are headed to dinner and then to the Apple store to try and sort out my computer. So wish us luck there. I could not be less in focus. There we go. So today I am wearing a sportier ensemble. I actually really love this outfit. So on my feet I have the Claire's and Roughly socks as always. I will link both of them in the description box down below. And then I have on a pair of shorts that I actually purchased from Forever 21. And then my shirt is this striped nylon deadstock uh, 1960s shirt. Or actually it was deadstock and then I purchased it and started wearing it a lot. Uh, so I just think it's really cute and I really like these together. I think it's adorable. And then on my face, I've got some glittery eyeshadow because of course I do. And I'm actually wearing a lipstick color, applied kind of poorly apparently, called Go Lightly, which is a reproduction of one of Audrey Hepburn's lipsticks. So that's kind of neat. So that is the outfit today and we are off to breakfast. And then I think we're going to Target to pick up another membrane card. I found out the diagnosis for my computer. It is a problem with the screen, which means I have to get the screen replaced, which is going to be like $680. So it's not as bad as I feared it would be. Then it means that I can salvage all my files, we hope. I don't want to jinx anything. But it does mean that I haven't been able to offload any files off this memory card. So I think we're going to try and go to Target and pick up another one, and then I'll be able to record more for all of you. I just picked up a 64 gigabyte memory card so now I can film and film to my heart's content. We're here at 6! We thought it opened at 8, but online said 9, and then we called and they said 8, so we're here at 8.40. <laughs> I already found something I want. Shocking, I know. I think I commented on this one last time and I still really like it, but it's just not quite the right type of print that I would use for something historic. I think this would be really cool for an Empire Wasted Regency dress, and I have a crown that would go really nicely with it. I like those quite a lot. This one's quite pretty, just for a blouse or something. So my mom and I 
we're both kind of unimpressed with Zix this time. It's still a really nice store and their fabrics tend to be slightly cheaper than the surrounding stores, but previously we've been in there for a very long time just browsing and trying to make decisions and this time around there just wasn't that much that stood out to us. I ended up getting two yards or almost two yards of this really cute Halloween fabric which reminds me of the 1930s prints and it has bats on it and I thought this would be fun for a blouse maybe with a pair of black pants or with a black jumper over it. I just thought it was cute. And then I picked up one yard of felt in yellow and black. I forgot to get this when we were at Joann's the other day and I need it for Masquerade Barbie, which is a project I want to take on before Halloween. So I saw it there and I decided to get it there. And then lastly, I picked up this fabric, which sort of stood out to me. It looks almost like a seashell print and it's in a really pretty shade of pale blue with navy outlines on it and then little white checks and I purchased a crown based off of ones from the Regents of the Era and it's got a wave pattern to it so I thought this might be kind of cool uh, to go with that so I purchased nine yards of that and in total I spent 69 bucks which I think is pretty good given the quantity of material I purchased so now we're off to Old Country Store It's all done by hand. Teeny tiny little stitches. This would be a great color for Suburban Chopper Barbie. Might be even better. I love this print. I think that color is beautiful. That aqua tone. I really like this one as well. And then over here I think this would be really nice with the peachy colored crown that I purchased. They have a whole display of the Aboriginal Australian prints this time. And I love the ostriches. I think they're amazing. These are really pretty too. They have Halloween fabric. I like these ones. They're like embarrassed looking bats. I just bought that fabric. These look very 1930s-ish too. So cute. I might get a yard of this to go with my blouse. This is a really cute collection with the smiling lions and the giraffes and stuff. These are adorable. I love these so much. I don't know how I missed them, but they're the cutest. It's just saying that I think sometimes you have to accept you really like a fabric without buying it, and I think that's the case here, but this is adorable. So I think I showed everything I ended up purchasing in the last place, and I ended up just buying two things for 18th century projects, and then I picked up a striped fabric, which I'm going to use as contrast on the batty fabric I bought from Sooks. So now we are at Log Cabin Quilts, and this is a really nice quilt shop. I don't usually end up getting much here but I'm probably jinxing myself by saying that. They have a really nice selection of wools and flannels and quilting cotton and novelty prints and it's just fun to look around in here. These are the prettiest wools. I love them so much. I'm really into this Kelly green color. It was beautiful too. I love the panel up there. I'm thinking that I might be able to turn them into a dress somehow. It would be cool. I'm also totally going to get postcards for my patrons. really cute collection. It's very different. It's like mint greens instead of the traditional greens. We're gushing over this quilt. We think it's so cute. It's very like 1930s meets modern. Oh, they just sell the applique panel too. Uh-oh. I love this one. That's a delight. This is a really cute collection. I love the purples with the greens. And this is really cute too, with the birds and the gray and the peach. I love that a lot. I'm a bit of a fan of the 1930s prints. Oh wow, they actually have K-Facet here. I don't remember them having K-Facet before. So I have officially left Log Cabin Quilts. I really like that store, but I didn't see anything that really stuck out to me today. They actually had K-Facet prints, which I don't think they've had before, and they were $7.99 each, which is like $2 cheaper than I've seen them sold anywhere else, but none of the prints really stuck out to me. And as much as I love those wool fabrics, I can purchase them online and they didn't have large enough quantities there for me to use them for anything historic. However, I did end up buying something. I got little postcards for my patrons, uh, just my top tier patrons, because I thought that would be a cute little 
memory from the trip uh, to share with them. We're gonna drive back the way we came and hopefully we'll come across a antique store that we passed. And then I think we're gonna try old brick house shops or we're gonna try going to downtown Lancaster. Just kind of depends on how we're feeling. So this place was the first antique store that I ever went into and it actually shut down. We think it shut down because of a fire hazard because it was just packed full. But last time when we came it was open again and it looked like it was starting to come back to life. There were a few stores set up and the prices were really reasonable. When I looked it up this time they had very recent reviews. So I figured it would be open but it looks like it has completely shut down again which is kind of a shame. So I'm not sure where we're going next but we're going to figure that out now. Remember. Now we are going into the Scarlet Willow. So I'm getting a purple skirt, I'm getting this dress which I didn't try on but I really hope fits. I'm getting this pink dress that has embroidery on the front that I also really hope fits. And then this super cute coral dress with darts at the waist which is just lovely. So we went to Scarlet Willow and then we went to a couple other little shops and we just came out of Telltale Dress. We were really really impressed by the Scarlet Willow, it had a huge selection of vintage clothing and was really really nice. And then the other one, the Telltale Dress stuff, was a little bit more expensive, a little less curated, and there was a lot less of it. So I wouldn't recommend it as highly, but the Scarlet Willow was definitely a winner, and I walked out with a few pieces I really, really love. This is where we're going now, building character. Pretty plants. Yep. Another one of the little bunny dishes. They're so cute. I really like this dress, but I think it would be too small for me. And I like this one too, but I think it's going to be too big for me. Very sad. This is all organized by color and it's very visually pleasing. And a lot of what's over here is absolutely gorgeous, but they're just silk dresses and they're dressier dresses than I really tend to wear. So, we have officially left building character. In fact, we left about an hour ago, and my mom and I were both pretty unimpressed with it. I didn't have fond memories of it from two years ago when we went, but I knew she liked it. It has a lot of, like, crafty and local goods, but it also had some antiques last time around, whereas this time it didn't really have any in the downstairs area, though it did have some vintage clothing upstairs. Uh, the vintage clothing just wasn't really to my taste. So we both left thoroughly unimpressed with it, and. I think feeling like we wouldn't really bother to go back even if we were in that area. Where the Scarlet Willow was far superior to the last time we went, which was two years ago. Last time they didn't have very much clothing uh, and they had a pretty sparse upstairs, whereas this time around the entire upstairs was vintage clothing and it was all really reasonably priced and they had a wide variety of sizes. It was just a really great experience going there and I really enjoyed it. Then as I said, we went to a few little shops along the street as well. Didn't end up buying anything, but it's a nice downtown to just sit around or to walk around and browse through. So now we are on our way to Zion or Zionville Antique Mall, which is very highly rated. I think it had like 185 star ratings, but my dad and I went to one in this area that was really highly rated as well and was complete crap. So I have high expectations, but I'm also trying to manage my expectations, but hopefully it will be good. This isn't our sort of booth, but oh boy, is it ever a booth to behold. So many little cars. I like the old lady stickers. I don't think they're for sale though. I still love these Lennox spice jars. I think they're so cute. It's a nice dress form, wolf form. It's very similar to my size, too. Do you think we could fit that in our car? We need something like that to challenge us. Hi. 
I think you should get this and use it as a water bottle holder. Creepy thing of the day. No. Definitely haunted. Where's this creepier? So we have now arrived at Wheel Antique Center. I have fond memories with this place because it's where I got my pattern cabinet. I absolutely love that piece and I don't think we're going to find anything nearly as special today. In fact, I hope we don't for the sake of my wallet, but it should be fun to walk around anyway. This is it in all its glory. And that's where we loaded up the pattern cabinet. <laughs> memories! Still have the strawberry brooch that I completely forgot to go back for last time. Ooh! It's a very visually pleasing booth. That'd be really cute to go on top of a hat. It's just the right size. Once again, using my hand for reference. I think I might get that. Remember, it's near the ghost. There's a hat and half. Gloves. Gloves upon gloves upon gloves. And I've run into the age-old problem of having fat hands. So we have left Wheel Antiques. I think I filmed a decent amount in there. Uh, it was very warm in there, especially while we were waiting like 15 minutes at checkout. But it's a nice store and it's nice to browse through. They have really large open booths. They have a couple display cases up front. They've got Actually not that wide variety of stuff. It's still worth visiting, I think, if you're in the area. And I ended up getting a skirt, a wool skirt, that was like $12. And apparently it was in the wrong booth, so it was supposed to be $23, but they gave it to me for $12, so that's something. And then I got a dress for like 11 bucks as well. So I'm pretty happy with those two purchases, and I will try and include worn footage now, because I know you guys want to see it. And now we are headed off to Cottage Antiques and Crafts or something, which is a place I've been to before, but my mom hasn't. My dad and I went here when we came up to pick up my pattern cabinet, and I ended up buying a school cabinet here. So once again, we'll have to see if we find anything that special, though I'm not looking for anything, except for Florence ceramic figurines. I still don't manage to come across one of those on this trip, and I'd really like to. Well, we've come across quite a couple, but none that are like special and wonderful that I want to purchase. Here we are. It's in a strip mall, which is kind of weird, but not as weird as it being in an actual mall like that one my dad and I went to. So this is the outfit for our final day of the trip. It is currently Sunday. It's a little bit wrinkled and worse for wear, but it's still quite cute. I got this dress from Spearmint Vintage on Instagram, and it's one of my favorites because it's like the 1950s equivalent of sweatpants. It's six inches too big for me, so there's no pressure on any point in my body. It's got an adjustable tie waist, so I can cinch it in or I can just like let my stomach hang free. It's so comfortable and I love it so much. But as I said, it does wrinkle, so that's a downside. I'm wearing little pink socks with the Claire's from Royal Vintage, and then I'm wearing this beautiful hat which I picked up at Plum Pudding Antiques that I went to earlier in the week. I said when I purchased it that I had a dress that it would go perfectly with. I just so happened to have brought that dress with me, so I decided I'd wear the hat. My hair, however, is a little like all over the place. It's not the best brush out I've ever done, but it's also very early in the morning and I'm very tired, so I'm using that as an excuse. But overall, I think it is a pretty cute ensemble, and I'm definitely ready to do the last little bit of the antiquing for the trip. I highly doubt anyone cares, but this is my coffee of choice. Starbucks Frappuccino's toasted white chocolate flavor is the best flavor, and if you disagree, you can fight me. Also, can we talk about how adorable the print of my duffel bag is? It's like Halloween themed unicorns, and I got it on Society6, and I love it so much. Focused. So we've been here for approximately 15 minutes, and I already made a major purchase. I purchased a spool cabinet, a really pretty four drawer spool cabinet with some of its original knobs and then it's got dividers in the drawers and the top drawer is velvet lined and it's gorgeous.
basically in heaven with this booth. I love this jacket. Dazzling. Perfume and cold cream display. Love these fashion plates. I think this wins the creepy awards for today. A jar full of plastic babies. Alright, so we just left Renninger's. I don't think I filmed a whole lot in there. I seem to be historically bad at filming a lot in Renninger's, but it's very crowded and it's just difficult to film in there. I don't know, it's not one of those places that inspires me to pull the camera out, even though I really, really enjoy it. And this time we went to all of my favorite booths. There are two booths in there that I just love. One sells a lot of vintage patterns, vintage fabric, vintage hats, vintage shoes. It's like a feast for the vintage seamstress's eyes and wallet. <laughs> and then the other one is a clothing booth and she has like five different booths and they're all full of different clothing. She has one that's like men's stuff from the 70s, one that's women's stuff from the 60s, and then she has a lot of 50s and even Edwardian stuff too. So it's always just super enjoyable to look through everything she has. My camera very rudely ran out of batteries and shut off, but I was just saying that there's this other booth that I really love, but the woman who runs it's really nice and really and really willing to negotiate. So I ended up getting a dress for $25 and then a hat, which is the most money I've ever spent on a hat. But this is just the most amazing hat. I think it's from the 30s or the 40s. It was marked as being Edwardians, but it's definitely not. But it's just like striped and silk and it has these ridiculous bows on it. It's just delightful. I love it so much. And then there was another little booth that was run by a woman who actually has a booth in Adam's Antiques Annex. And I purchased several hats from her yesterday at her booth there. And then today I actually got to meet her and she was really nice and she had some really cute things. I ended up buying a dress for $15, which was great. And then this really cute cute skirt from the 1950s that has kittens on it with rhinestones and it's made out of a flannel so it's like really appropriate for winter and autumn and I'm just really happy with all of my purchases and then I ended up purchasing a whole bunch of patterns and another hat from that one lady as well so it was just a really good time and I'm really glad that we went out we are headed home which I'm also looking forward to because it's been a long week even though it's been a lot of fun